over the next seven minutes, I'm going to try to convince you to add one question to your baptism protocols of your ministry. It's a question that I believe will help you make baptism the major discipleship moment that Jesus intended it to be when he commanded us to go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's a question that we added to our baptism protocols at Cyprus Community Church in Salinas, California, after I had a conversation with a man named Bob. Now, Bob is an 80-year-old man. He's five foot six inches tall and Japanese descent. And four years ago, when he was 76 years old, he started attending our church and he subsequently believed in the gospel. And then soon after that, he was baptized. And after he was baptized, he came up to me and he said, okay, so I'm coming to church every week and I believe the gospel and I've been baptized. So what's next? I wonder how many people in churches around America have believed in the gospel, been baptized and are asking what's next. So I shared with Bob, I said, Bob, you need to be discipled. So for the next 12 months, Bob and I were in a discipleship group together with two other guys, and we learned to be disciples and how to make disciples. And so over the last two years, Bob has discipled eight people, and those eight people have discipled 29 people, and Bob is becoming a disciple-making force at the age of 80 years old as a relatively new believer. But that's not my point. My point is, when Bob asked me what's next, I realised something. I realised the gospel I had been preaching was weak. And our baptism protocols as a church were insufficient. Because if you fully embrace the wholeness of Jesus' kingdom gospel... And if you've been baptised in a way that's made baptism a major discipleship moment, you'll know what's next. There won't be any doubt in your mind what's next. You'll be crystal clear on what's next. So my staff team and I sat down and we pulled our baptism protocols apart. And as we were putting them back together, we realised we needed to add one question. And that's the question I want to talk to you about. Now, my friend and mentor, the leader of the Bonhoeffer Project, Bill Hull, I've, said, I've heard him say it a number of times. But he says, when you get baptised, you give up the right to say no to Jesus. So we had already put in place two questions in our baptism protocols that called people to begin saying yes to Jesus. The first question is this. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's one and only Son, God's resurrected King? It's a question about who Jesus is. The second question has to do with what Jesus has done. And do you believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins and that he was resurrected from the dead on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures? And as we looked at those two questions, we realised something. We realised that baptism was a major discipleship moment. And if baptism was a major discipleship moment, it wasn't just an opportunity for me to acknowledge what Jesus has done for me. But it should also be an opportunity for me to pledge my allegiance to King Jesus, to commit my whole life everything I am and all that I have to serve him. And so we added a third question to our baptism protocols and this is what it is. And this is the question that I want to encourage you to consider adding to your baptism protocols as well, to make baptism a major discipleship moment. 
The third question that we begin asking people is this. And are you committed to following Jesus no matter what the cost, without conditions or excuses for the rest of your life? Are you committed to following Jesus no matter what the cost, without conditions or excuses for the rest of your life? Now, before you start thinking all of the theological exceptions that you want to begin throwing out at me, just consider as a new believer, if you hear that, do you understand what's next? You do. You see, when you say yes to that question as a new believer, you're laying it all on the line. When you say yes to that question, you have effectively given up your right to say no to Jesus. But you have also reinforced your faith in Jesus' kingdom gospel. Through baptism, you have enacted what the Apostle Paul calls the obedience of faith. But you have also made it crystal clear that you know what's next. And what's next is a new life with Jesus of denying yourself taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. That's what's next. So in the 30 seconds that I have remaining, let me ask you three questions. As you make disciples, is baptism at the forefront of your mind? Because it was at the forefront of Jesus' mind when he gave us the Great Commission. It was the first instruction that he gave us after he said, make disciples. When you baptise people, are you making baptism the major discipleship moment Jesus originally intended it to be? And one of the things our staff team realised is that before we can begin asking other people to say yes to this question, we need to, make, we need to ask ourselves that question ourselves. So let me ask you here at the Discipleship Forum this year, are you committed to following Jesus? no matter what the cost, without conditions or excuses for the rest of your life. May God empower you by his Holy Spirit to make disciples with strength and force in the days to come. God bless you.